Hello, everyone. I am uh, Claudio Murgan, the host of the Speech on Inspire podcast. Please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, uh, share it, and, and like it. My guest today is Suzanne Morais. She's a certified professional hypnotist with a degree in kinesiology and psychology. You can find more information about her at www.journeyshypnosis.com. Uh, Suzanne, thank you for uh, joining me today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I recently had another certified uh, hypnotherapist uh, on my show, but I am sure we are going to find more and more nuances of this uh, impressive uh, healing methodology. But let's start with uh, how was your journey from university professor to become a spiritual uh, hypnotherapist? Uh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, so I, I consider myself a transpersonal and spiritual hypnotherapist. Um, and what that means is I work a little bit more with the spirit realm um, and with people's higher selves um, through the use of hypnosis. And how did I get here? Um, it's such a great question. You know, when you think about the span of your life, you realize everything that you've ever done has been stacking up to get you to where you are. At least that's how I feel as I look back on my timeline. Um, but yes, I had an interest in psychology in college, but um, really didn't have any interest in being a therapist. So I went on and studied um, outdoor recreation. Um, and then I taught in universities. I taught at Clemson University, Penn State University, North Carolina State University, all very prestigious doing um, great work, working in academia. But honestly, as much as I love teaching, I still love teaching. There was an aspect of the job that didn't feel very fulfilling. Um, and I was actually um, led to hypnotherapy in a very odd way uh, through a podcast. I was listening to Simon Brown's podcast. He now calls it Our Paranormal Lives, Afterlives, I think is what it was. It was formerly um, the Past Lives podcast. And my daughter asked me at one point, not too long ago, um, if I believed in past lives. And I said, I think so, but I don't know anything about it. Let's listen to a podcast. And it was like, you know, the, the sky opened up and there it was. Um, I felt it. I could, I knew it was my calling. Um, I, every time I listened to a, a podcast episode, I could see myself doing this work and, um, you know, things just fell into place as they do when you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. And I was able to get a great training and, um, within a year of my training, I opened my practice and I have never been without a client. I have enjoyed the most tremendous success and the universe has said, yes, now go do your, do your work. So here I am. Yes. Spiritual work is in high demand these uh, days. And I was talking to a friend of mine earlier today and he said uh, that be careful. You have to keep your vibration high because the entities are lurching around us and uh, they will grab on every single occasion the moment you lower your shield so be careful and what you are doing um, you are you know unveiling potential uh, lower energy fields in your patients and clients and make them aware on how to uh, revert that field of energy yes yeah that's interesting that you mentioned that because I am finding more and more people coming into my office with entity attachments. And um, I'm finding this sort of by accident. <laughs> um, I didn't even know what an entity was. And, um, you know, through the client's experience with it, I, I went on to to research and now I'm finding them more and more and more. And now I, I have the skills and the understanding to help people be able to clear this. I just had a client last night that had an entity attachment. Um, so that is something that we're seeing more and more. And um, it's, a, it's possible to find that through hypnosis and release those entities. Yes, I've been working with another guest uh, of mine on this podcast for a number of years. And uh what she founded in myself and my family and the friends we recommended 
uh, is pretty scary because these entities are not um, latched on to us uh, since yesterday, but since childhood or maybe even a previous life. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is not always easy to get rid of them and send them back to source. Right, right. Um, and that's absolutely the case. Um, yeah, it, they, they are sticky. <laughs> Um, and there's a reason why they're here. And it's interesting because a large majority of the clients that I'm finding have them, as I mentioned, I I generally find them by accident, often come to me, not for a spiritual type of session. They, they might've actually signed up for a traditional clinical session where they're dealing with a traditional issue, like, I don't know, uh, non-smoking cessation, or maybe like people pleasing or, um, confidence issues. And then lo and behold, we notice that there's, you know, they notice there's something attached because in the sessions I lead, they are actually leading the session and I'm just interpreting what's going on and then helping them facilitate the change within themselves. Yes. It's a very interesting, uh, time because the society and everything surrounding us, um, creates the environment for low energy, for low vibration, darker entities and not too many people realize that um, this energy low energy um, keeps around us or stays around us because of what we watch about because of what we eat what we breathe and the air the quality of the air we breathe so um, unless we change our perspective and we understand the um, the danger of consuming this type of information we we want it won't change sure sure yeah you know i think that um just being able to recognize when your energy feels really low for no reason at all um or maybe you find that you just don't quite feel like yourself um you know uh the client that i was working with last night just during her pre-talk before we were in hypnosis i could hear her saying things like i'm so tired of myself (laughs) Um, you know, oh, you know, I'm so tired of of the chatter in in my head. I'm so, um, I'm driving myself crazy. And I thought, that's, that's odd. You know, like who, who, you know, which part of you, (laughs) you know, I said, so let's kind of check into this. So it's when you start to feel a little duality, she says she often feels like she's out of her body or she's not quite in her body. Um, and recognizing that that doesn't always have a medical, association with it and it it is important to get that checked out but when when you've explored all of that and you're still not feeling great as so many of my clients do when they say you know i've been in therapy my whole life and i'm still feeling stuck i'm still feeling depressed um you know check it out with a hypnotherapist or you know psychic medium or a specialist who can remove those energies yes and uh, the friend i mentioned earlier today he revealed to me a dream he had maybe a week or two weeks ago where he was falling through a uh, pavement in a very deep um, hole and everything was dark and uh, other entities tried to grab at him. And he realized he woke up within himself pretty much and realized that I am light. I am love. I, I am with the angels. And that moment he was pushed back to the, towards the surface, like a, um, like a rocket full of light and love and said that was the way for me to escape the darkness wow yeah that's interesting and i think always having the intention of connecting with the divine or the purest source is the best way to combat that so that's that's beautiful yes and going back to what you initially said that uh, you didn't feel satisfied being uh, you know a psychology professor and Again, very recently, I talked to an oncologist from USA, from the USA, and she gave up her profession to start something different in the health um, industry. I mean, still health, but not uh, pharma related, pretty much more sure. natural. And do you see the same trend within your clients that they are not satisfied with what they are doing uh, on a daily basis? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um yeah, I have, you know, the, 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 the wording that I hear often is I feel stuck. You know, I feel like I'm not living my purpose. I feel like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel stuck. 
And, you know, what's possible in hypnosis is for people to get out of their thinking minds, you know, get out of the analytical ego and, and dive in a little deeper to the higher self and to where all that inner wisdom is. And you can explore um, yourself from a higher perspective. Um, you can explore different timelines for yourself. You can explore the past when you did know your purpose. You can explore the future when you're already living your, your purpose. All of this is possible when you dive into the, the subconscious. And generally what I am finding is that people aren't really satisfied with the work they're doing because perhaps it's not in alignment with their purpose. So they are doing what they are doing because it was what society, you know, felt was the right thing or approved of um, financially. <laughs> a lot of people are doing the work because it brings in a really good income. Um, yes. And, you know, uh, and they, and they're afraid to step away from that really nice income. Uh, but they have this feeling, this sense inside they're supposed to be doing more. And, you know, what I have been noticing is what they're learning about themselves in hypnosis is that their real calling is to be a light in the world or to be able to make a difference for people, to be able to help people in some way. And it, it generally aligns with their skills. Um, but instead of serving the corporate world, um, you know, serving people individually in a, a more personal way seems to be what um, is the trend or what I'm noticing more and more. And, and do you also follow up with them and uh, see if they follow through uh, their soul calling and they leave that past behind and start something new? Yeah, um, I don't always know what people go on to do, but I actually just received a beautiful email today from a client who, um, a little bit different, it's not so much about uh, work, but she was um, examining whether or not she should stay where she is living or move to a different location. And she was feeling very fearful about leaving because she has a great community and she's built a beautiful life. Um, in hypnosis, she was able to explore, you know, the other decision of moving away. And it was so clear to her that that's what she was supposed to do. She had so much clarity. And the beautiful email that she sent me today indicated that she just rented, uh, this was um, on Friday. And so what today is Wednesday. So in those um, five days, she said it's been the most profound um few days of her life because she's has so much clarity and direction about where she's going. And so she rented a cabin in the place where she wants to move. She decided she's going to go there and just try it. She has an idea about the work that she wants to do. She said uh, there was a symbol that came up. Her spirit guides came to her in session and um, we're telling her that she has come full circle um, in the place where she's living and they gave her a symbol and she found that symbol in a necklace and she purchased that necklace for herself and, and is holding that. So that's just something that's, that's very recent that's came to my attention today and just a beautiful way to see people being able to trust in the truth that they're realizing in a session. Yes. And that's beautiful. And with my previous uh, hypnotherapist guest, we discussed about how hard it is for us to let go and embrace the new uh, unknown. Um, yeah. how, it, how it was for you, how hard it was for you to just leave the, everything behind and start something new? That's such a great question. I, I'm sure I felt um, as much or more anxiety than any other person feels when you're considering stepping away from a um, a career that has status, that has benefits, that pays well. Um, I actually had a great schedule. I had a nine month appointment. So I was only working nine months a year. It was great, you know, and all of that, except I didn't feel happy. And, you know, I, I told myself that story that everybody else does. Oh, I could just make a do with this. You know, I can get, get by. It's not that bad. But I just felt like every day I was dying a little, <laughs> you know, and I, and I could just, it felt like I would have to count my days until I had a day off. And um, because I, again, I, I really liked teaching, but it just wasn't lighting me up the way it did when I was, you know, earlier in my career. And 
um, you know, the funny thing is uh, to be able to make this, um, that transition, I gave myself a deadline where I had to, to decide by a particular date. And, you know, honestly, I felt the pull and the call inside of me to step into hyp hypnosis. And I, I could hear that voice and I trusted that it was going to be okay, but I was scared. And on the day of, um, of that decision, I went into meditation. And then after my meditation, I pulled a card, an Oracle card. And the, the Oracle card said solitude, I think is what it said, or maybe it was rest. And I thought, okay, I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to watch a Netflix thing. And I'm just going to get out of my head for a little bit. And <laughs> you know what movie came up into my feed? This is crazy. It wasn't Netflix. It was um, Amazon Prime. The Secret. You know, the old secret, yes. the movie yeah. from, you know, what, the early 90s. And I had never seen it or maybe I had, but it had been years and I watched it. And, you know, it, it, it's worth watching again. It is a little dated, but I went back and it's I was about halfway through it when I knew so completely and utterly I was utterly sure that I was going to be able to step in hypnosis and be fine. And I hit send I, right there in the middle of the movie. I hit pause hit send to my boss, letting him know that I needed a meeting with him. Um, you know, and there it was. So it's so beautiful. Like I said, the universe supported me with it. And I just had to follow my heart and really go into the, to meditation, check my Oracle cards. You know, I, I did have to get confirmation from a lot of places, but I'll tell you what, there, it has been just incredible every moment of the way. I manifested an office in the most perfect space. I've manifested the income that I need. I mean, it is it is it just absolutely brilliant. I'm I'm glad that everything worked out for for you. And because we are talking about movies, uh, I was watching another TV series on Netflix, and sometimes you have the ad or something on YouTube, and you ads uh, come out, and it was the choosing about uh, Jesus Christ and uh, it's you know, him um, healing um, someone who couldn't walk almost his entire life. And mm -hmm. I just click, skip, skip, skip many, many times. And then one of our friends, we have a group uh, on, um, on like text, a messenger, uh, mentioned this movie. She said, I suggest you guys watch this movie. I liked it. I said, okay, if she recommended close friends, let's let's do it. And I start watching it. I cannot tell you how many times I cried. So uh, oh. it was so moving because maybe I'm going through a phase in my life where if I would have seen these scenes before, I would have just watched them or yeah. look at them on a regular, like normal with no feelings. But this time yeah. is different. I don't know why yet but it's very profound. It has a very profound uh, experience on, and effect on me. So I have mm. to, to go deeper and, and check out why that is happening. You know, I love that. And what I'm hearing from what you're telling me is that there's emotion. And, you know, when you're wondering if an idea, a thought is coming from your soul self, from your intuition, from that higher self, I think you can confirm that pretty confidently when it's a positive feeling, when it brings about a happy, joyous emotion. Our thinking mind, that generally brings about fear. <laughs> it generally brings negative associations with it because our, our thinking mind is trying to protect us. And that's beautiful. We need that. But when you can start to daydream, close your eyes and imagine a different outcome and it makes your heart beat a little, or maybe it makes you cry because it's so beautiful, or whatever this is, then you know that's coming from that deep, loving place. And if you work from there, you're going to be fine. Yes, thank you. Suzanne, you, you mentioned the secret and also, you know, law of attraction. Uh, how does the law of attraction factor in with hypnosis? Uh, that's such a great <clears throat> question. And it really, oof, it's it's the, the best of it because, um, if you've ever tried to manifest something, right? You know, the first idea is, well, you got to get really clear on your goals, <laughs> you know, and very clear, get really specific. And then you need to kind of work through your limitations, like what's getting in my way. 
And then you need to really be able to visualize it, feel it as if it's already happened. Um, and then of course, trusting and believing well in hypnosis, you don't have to do that hard work. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can have a, an, a vision or a goal, but in hypnosis, you just get right into it. So you can feel what it feels like as you embody your future self that is driving, you know, that RAV4 and making $200,000 a year in that perfect body, right? You can embody it. You can feel it. You can smell the car. Um, you can, you know, check your phone and look at your bank account and feel how good that feels. And what are you going to go buy with that money? And oh, the new nice clothes are going to fit on your beautiful body. You can embody it. So you have already experienced it. It's not like you have to just imagine it. You get into the feelings and the emotions. And so, you know, subconscious doesn't know the difference between real and imagined. Subconscious believes it's already happened. So therefore you've just tuned yourself into the energy, um, the frequency of abundance that you desire. So you are there. And the best thing is whatever's getting in your way of believing that you can clear, you know, mm -hmm. you can do that work pretty quickly, you know, in a hypnosis session, it doesn't have to take years and years of therapy to go and figure out, well, you know, I have, um, fear of lack, <laughs> you know, I have a fear of not making enough money instead, you know, Oh, do you feel, do you sense anything that's keeping you from being able to to trust or believe this. Oh yeah. Well, you know, I have this money belief and then in the hypnosis session, we can go through and clear those beliefs, you know, go back to the origin of those beliefs and release those. So, um, if you want to really manifest an abundant life or something different from yourself, hypnosis is the way to do that. And, and I now combine coaching, um, law of attraction coaching with hypnosis. Um, it's, it's a power punch I'm, I'm creating right now. And, um, it's, it's amazing. Interesting. So in other words, if, when you're doing psychology, were you allowed to use any other methods of when interacting with clients or you have specific, um, no terminology, specific procedure, uh, mm -hmm. to use? Yeah. Well, just to clarify, I actually was never a psychologist. I studied psychology, but I, I never worked in psychology. And I actually taught more type of leadership when I was in the university. So um, I have not worked as a psychotherapist, but I partner with a lot of psychotherapists who forward their clients to me when they're stuck. And, um, you know, what I think is starting to happen is more and more uh, psychotherapists are getting trained in EMDR um, and hypnosis and tapping, emotional freedom techniques. So we are starting to see a lot of these mind body techniques that I use in hypnosis are now starting to be included in a more traditional type of session, which I think is amazing and really necessary. Yes, I did a full interview on uh, emotional um, ETF, I think emotional um, freedom, freedom techniques. Technique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with yeah. Art uh, Geyser. And um, that was a very, very interesting uh, interview. Yeah, absolutely. And what is your normal process when you meet someone, they, they come to you and they want to do a hypnosis session? Yeah. So typically I have a consultation call just to make sure that... Um, you know, we have rapport and, um, to help inform people about hypnosis, uh, because a lot of people have that Hollywood version of hypnosis in their mind where they're afraid they're going to cluck like a chicken or somebody's going to control their mind. And I like to put them at ease that it's absolutely nothing like that. Um, a hypnosis session is actually quite engaging. Um, you know, we dialogue throughout the entire session and, um, and a client is awake and aware and in control the whole time. Um, and so after a consultation call, um, I meet with clients in person, or I also work with people online and, um, I will start a session with a little bit of a pre-talk, just getting really clear with the goals. And then we move to hypnosis. And, um, just to give you an idea of what a session's like for everybody who believes, you know, or ha who has this notion of the Hollywood version, um, generally, um, a client reclines, whether they be on their own couch at, in their home or on their own bed or in the recliner chair in my office. 
And I started a session with a guided um, meditation with the intention of just helping them relax, you know, and start to focus in on their body and their being in the space, bringing a sense of calm. Um, following that, I start to um, use questioning to engage the imagination. And that's really how you access the subconscious. It's through the imagination. So whenever um, you're watching a movie, I'm watching a movie, um, that is a state of hypnosis. And, and why that's a state of hypnosis is because your focus is on one thing, so much so that your busy analytical mind has slowed down and it's not analyzing every little thing and you're able to deeply focus. Well, with hypnosis, instead of um, focusing in on an external screen, you're focusing on, in on your internal screen. And so I engage the imagination um, by asking questions. You know, one of the very first things we do in a session is create a safe space. And it's so fun. You know, I ask, um, you know, dream of a place, a, a personal utopia for you, a place where you feel perfectly safe. And then what does it look like? Immerse yourself as if you're there. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? What does it smell like? And we kind of move through that. What are you doing in this space? And now there's like a, an imaginary, you know, movie going on in your mind. And, and not all people are visual. Some people, it's just a, a knowing, but activating the imagination. Now that's where we go from there. Um, I do um, a lot of regression where people can go back into their youth and care for their inner child, provide resources for their inner child, go back to the origin of a belief they have, or, you know, I, I work a lot with perfectionism, people pleasing, um, you know, anger issues. Where, where did this get patterned in? And, um, you don't need to know consciously where those beliefs came from, uh, but your subconscious knows and you can easily go back to that origin, whether it be in this life or another life. Um, sometimes people go into past lives um, or, of course, I also facilitate past life regressions that were purposely people do that. But in any case, the intention in any session is to be able to release emotion that we've been holding or beliefs that are holding us back. And then also to be able to provide emotionally, even if it's just through the imagination for your younger self in such a way that the subconscious is convinced that you receive the care that you need. And therefore those old habits or behaviors or ways of being don't have to keep coming up. Um, and so it is very possible to clear a lifelong issue such as people pleasing. And I say that just cause I just worked with that today. Um, uh, you can clear it really in one session. Um, it is possible to do that kind of profound work in one session. Yeah. <clears throat> These experiences are quite transformative. And, um, um, I want to ask you how deep in terms of lifetimes, lives down or more than, than two or three. When I work with clients, yes. how deep is it? <clears throat> you know, generally they come in with a, an issue or problem. Like maybe there's a relationship <clears throat> that they're having a trouble with, or maybe there's an issue that they feel is bigger than something in this life. You know, maybe they've come in, you know, their parents were telling them you've been anxious since you were a child. And um, when you have that intention, uh, we just trust your soul self or your subconscious to guide you back to the origin of that, to help you understand it and perhaps clear it. So I don't really know where exactly people go in terms of, of generations of lives. I mean, I've had clients that have been on other planets living very different existences, which is so, so interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, and then clients that have been in recent lives and then some that feel like they've been, they feel really ancient. So, you know, the span is really quite, quite broad, but it is relevant to what the client is experiencing. Interesting. Um, Suzanne, do you have a spiritual mentor? I don't, I have, um, 
I have friends that I go to when I have spiritual questions. <laughs> um, I don't have a, a, an official mentor. Um, the, the women who train me um, through my hypnosis, uh, I, I call them my Jedis. And when I have a question, like I have recently, we were talking about entities at the beginning. And I recently asked them a question about entities and they said, oh, you know, we never work with entities. You know, that's something that's not coming up very often for them. But if it's coming up for you, it's probably in alignment with your purpose um, and what you're supposed to be doing. So I get those kinds of answers from them as I try to navigate um, what it is that I'm doing here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And other than meditating, what uh, other spiritual uh, daily practice do you perform? Hmm. Other than meditating. So meditating is my big one. I am um, I spend time, I'm learning to row cards right now, which is fun. Um, I enjoy oracle cards. I um, went on a trip not too long ago to Sedona and met with somebody who's who told me my guides were recommending that I use Oracle cards. Um, I have found that automatic writing is, is something that I'm experiencing and enjoying. Um, so I don't do it with the, with my computer. I do it in my journal. Um, I just simply ask a question and then I do what I can to turn off my thoughts and just write. And that's been really incredible because the words that come out are so loving and so supportive and really wise and almost ancient wording. <laughs> that's not mine. Um, and so that's been fun to explore. So there's lots of things that I'm, uh, that I do. I dabble in as I'm, as I'm growing. Thank you. And how was your trip to Sedona? Any unusual experiences? <laughs> oh, Sedona. <laughs> Have you been? Uh, I was planning to go, uh, last year um but didn't uh, didn't work out sedona um i went for the first time last year and it's calling me i need to need to go there so if anybody's listening to this that needs me to come work with them in sedona <laughs> i'm ready to be there but sedona's magical it's magical um I went there with a friend who was going through a hard time and we both kind of look back on that time with like, what just happened? Um, you know, we visited many of the vortexes. We hiked every day. Um, you know, I was helping or working with my friend with hypnosis and there was profound awarenesses that were coming up. We would run into people and the coincidences, which are not coincidences, the synchronicities were just incredible. Um, on and on and on. There were so many things that happened one after the other. Like if you really want to go and get a big spiritual revival, the energy in that beautiful place is just, uh, it's uncomparable. I, I, I highly recommend it. In fact, I interviewed four uh, guests who lived in Sedona. So if I go there, I can do the sweat lodge. I can do the medicine wheel. I can do the singing bowls. I can be oh, taken wow. to all the vortexes. Uh, I mean, um, I, I interview some pretty good uh, people who have experienced the land for many years. One of them is indigenous. So he has even higher wow. knowledge than all the other ones uh, put together, maybe. Uh, and the stories he uh, told us are quite uh, incredible. It's a special place. It is calling me. I, I, I was just looking on my phone today. I'm trying to figure out how to get back there. So um, for all of your listeners, Sedona is a beautiful place. And the people that work there, they, um, they resonate in that energy, you know, and they're, they're eager to share that. We had some really nice readings while we were there. And what other magical places did you visit in the world? <laughs> um, I would say another spiritual place that I visited is in the Grand Canyon. Um, my husband and I did a 13-day um, um, self-guided trip with um, some close friends. And being deep in the canyon um, is a really magical place. Uh, the water is running through and um, you know, they say with water, um, it's a great way to be able to connect with the energy of source, um, because uh, it's just a great way to be able to really connect spiritually 
and there's a large body of water there and um and then ancient ancient rocks you feel the ancientness of this of the grand canyon and the privilege of being able to be there um is is profound so certainly felt that there um had some experiences mostly in the desert it seems like the desert in the united states um, is a place where I really feel connected spiritually. Yeah, like uh, Joshua Tree, <clears throat> I uh, interviewed um, Angela Del Agua, who lives there, and um, she mentioned about the um, uh, magnificence and the beauty of, of the desert. And another friend did some um, workshops uh, over there, and he was quite yeah. impressed as well. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's all the stone. Maybe it's just ancient. I'm not really sure, but it's um, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know, another thing that I'd love to share with you a little bit about that I'm also learning through hypnosis that maybe um, others don't know. It's come up a lot. A lot of what I, I learn, I discover <laughs> through sessions. And um, what I am finding is that when people are in a hypnotic state, it's very similar to um, the state that people that uh, a psychic medium is in is what I, I believe. And so past loved ones can come in um, to session and visit <laughs> and communicate and offer words of support or whatever it is. This just happened with a client last night. Uh, it's pretty magical. It's uh, it's so unexpected um, to be able to connect uh, in that way, in such a way that feels really true. Um, you know, the energy of the person comes in. Uh, a lot of times I ask or invite the, the client to establish a signal with the, the past loved ones so that um, when they're beyond session, they can reveal that symbol uh, to the client in the timing that seems right to affirm that the experience has been real. Um, and we're seeing evidence of that. So it's really, it's really special. So um, it, it, a lot of times during session, it just happened last night with my client, uh, her grandparents came in and mm -hmm. wanted her to, you know, to hear what it is that they wanted to share with her. Thank you for sharing. Suzanne, do you have, any other experiences that change your spiritual path and um, since you started on this path? Mm. I, you know, this has been profound for me. When I stepped into hypnosis, I wasn't even really on my spiritual path yet. I, I Like I said, when I look back on the timeline of my life, I could see places where I was growing spiritually and then would stop and then would grow and be interested in then would stop. And when I got into academia, it all stopped uh, simply because that world is um, very analytical. Um, it's very competitive and it's very critical. And there wasn't room for, for this in my life then. Uh, when I became a hypnotherapist, you know, my spiritual world, as I said, I, I, I use that word, the universe just opened up. And all the experiences um, have just come, come to me in a way that are so profound, you know, being able to connect with the spirit guide, uh, being able to self use self hypnosis, uh, being able to, um, you know, starting to read tarot cards and how accurate they are when I do read them. Um, learning, I think I said, learning to meditate. Uh, it just, once it starts, once you, you start to tap into the spirit realm, everything is better. Uh, the world, life is more colorful and more interesting because you see the signs that are all around you. You know, we as humans, we're the center of our universe, right? We are, we are our center and when you start to look around and you notice that everything around us is for us, it's for us to realize and to see, you know, so that hawk that just flew in front of me as I was out from my walk, that was for me. And, you know, the beautiful blue sky, you know, with the big puffy clouds, those are for me. And I know it sounds a little bit, you know, egotistical or forward thinking or, you know, self-centered, but I, 
I think of it more as what a beautiful gift to live this life as opposed to the old victim mindset I used to have, you know, when I was so down and I felt like everything was a punch in the gut, you know, and it was just something to get through a day with a smile on my face. And now I, I can shake things off when things are times are hard, you know, I can move through them. I can see the deeper meaning because I recognize it's for my soul's ascension. It's for me to evolve. And that's what I'm here to do. When you realize that we're here, we chose this. We chose to live this. We chose this body, this experience, the people we're with. Okay, well, let's make it fun then. I've got this, like, it's like going on a great vacation, all expense paid. What am I going to do to make this awesome? (laughs) Where am I going to go? I need to go to Sedona. (laughs) you know and just kind of putting those things in and going and living big and you know not letting it all settle in and not holding it so much inside where it makes you sick and not feel so great yeah i mean i recently got a punch in the in the gut pretty pretty hard and uh, i was in shock for a couple of days my body my mind Uh, but i realized that uh, it's a lesson and i have to to move on no matter how painful that lesson is, and hopefully this will be the last uh, punch in the gut for a while to close a chapter in my life, and I'll be able to um, to move forward with my uh, head up and forget about what happened. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry that you went through that, and I'm, but I'm glad to hear that you have the perspective to be able to process it and you know try to make sense of it. I know we're human, right? These things hurt. They, we are sentient. You know, Eckhart Tolle says the power of now. You know, and in mm-hmm. our existence is only in this moment. There's no past and there's no future. There is just now. You know, and when you can just you know in those times where you feel like punch in the gut. You just take a deep breath and you just think about now. Oh, you know, I'm talking with an amazing guy right now. You know, um, the weather is perfect. I'm wearing my favorite shirt. You know, oh, it's soft on my skin. Oh, I'm breathing in a nice deep breath and that oxygen makes me feel so much better. What I'm doing is focusing in on the now and on what I'm grateful for rather than the pain the regret, the fear, all the things that our mind, our ego wants us to hold on to. If you can like break out of that feeling of that punch, even for a few minutes and start to disassociate from it, you know, you, it just feel you, you reconnect with your soul self and you know who we really are. Yes. And and I know that um, I have to, I, I need another day to shed everything that transpire, you know, I, I will fast and I will try to meditate as deep as possible to, to shed all that pain and the repercussions from um, what happened. Um, but I will have to face that reality. And as I said, move, move on. Yeah. And I, I do think it's important for us to feel things. We, we don't want to just move beyond it. Say, Oh, well, you know, that happened. Boom. You know, um, because it's important for us to hold our pain and look at it, learn from it, reflect on it, you know, mourn for it. And then when you feel like it's time, that's when it's time to let it go. And now just, you know, putting it in the past, taking on those lessons that are so important, but not stuffing it. You know, when you stuff it, when you're like, oh, that hurts so bad, but I'm a spiritual person. I'm not going to feel it. I'm, I'm just going to keep moving on. Your body's holding it. And, you know, Louise Hay, um, you know, writes that when you aren't dealing with emotion and you stuff it, it has to manifest in some way. So it's going to come up as depression, anxiety, illness. Um, so, you know, I, that's why I think that process of holding, reflecting, and releasing is really the most beautiful thing and helpful thing that you can do for yourself. Yes, indeed. Uh, Suzanne, are there any other programs or events you would like to, to mention? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I generally offer one uh, monthly online workshop 
Um, I just had a how to meditate uh, web uh, workshop last week. I, I teach uh, self hypnosis workshops and I teach um, manifesting workshops. As I mentioned, I am starting to I, I will I will be announcing a um, a law of attraction coaching slash hypnosis um, workshop that I'm going to be putting together. It's going to be, um, four events where we meet online. So anybody in the world can be a part of that. And just as I mentioned earlier, we're going to go into the state of hypnosis to be able to manifest. So it's the good stuff. And so that's, um, that's something new that's coming up. And I also do that personally for people. Um, I offer individual hypnosis sessions on just about anything that you can think of, <laughs> any issue at all. And, um, and, I, and then I lead spiritual type of um, hypnosis sessions, which can be meeting your, your spirit guide, connecting with your higher self, connecting with ancestors, uh, exploring different dimensions. So, you know, knowing or feeling like maybe we are somebody else on a different dimension. What does it feel like to live in those dimensions? You can explore future self. And then, as I mentioned, past life regression. So there's a, a large span of um, opportunity to learn and explore and to grow through hypnosis. Um, and you can find all of that on my website, which is journeyshypnosis.com. All the good stuff. Thank you. Um, Suzanne, what would you consider an accomplished life? Hmm. That's such a good question. An accomplished life. I, I've always considered an accomplished life is making a difference in the world, um, increasing uh, the consciousness of humanity. You know, the, the idea would be that we all, as, as all humans on earth, could come together in one beautiful moment and, um, and set the intention for peace. Um, I believe that if we could do that, just based on Lynn McTaggart's The Power of Eight, um, you know, that we can change the course of humanity. So uh, for me, an accomplishment is when a client walks out my door uh, with a sparkle in their eye, and, you know, they always tell me they feel lighter and then they feel better and they go off and now they're nicer to their spouses, spouses and their children. And then they have a better day at work. And when they have a better day at work, then their colleagues have a better day of work. And it just keeps spilling over and over. So accomplishment is being able to make a difference um, in a positive way for another person. Thank you. Beautiful. Suzanne, we are at the end of the, the interview. Any final thoughts? No, I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to be able to share about this. And thank you for the work that you do to share spirituality and all of its incredible components with with your listeners thank you very much all the best you too bye-bye and to my viewers thank you for watching um, share it like it leave a comment visit um, claudiumurgan.com and spiritualinspired.ca and until next time love and gratitude